This video will be about Italy, I promise, but we're going to start in Guernsey, which is one of the British-owned Channel Islands off the coast of France. They were occupied by the Germans during the Second World War and are covered by Nazi fortifications. This one is on the cliffs in Plymont, from which you can see the French coast. It's now known as the Plymont Observation Tower, which sounds almost benign, when in fact it was built by the Nazis using slave labour and to ensure the islands remained under German occupation for almost the entire duration of the Second World War. This is just one of many of the other fort Nazi fortifications on the Channel Islands. So why are these sinister and out-of-place buildings still standing in Guernsey? The practical answer is that they are too well built to eliminate. They could have been blown up, but the concrete underground bunkers would remain. And in a way, they've become part of the island's history, however unloved they may be. You could say the same thing about the castles or rocche, which you see in the picturesque hilltop towns of central Italy, typically right on top of the hill with the medieval town immedi immediately below it. A bit like the fortifications on the Channel Islands, they feel a little out of place, disconnected from the hustle and bustle of the town beneath them. They're also often strikingly empty and functional, without the care and detailing which makes Italian medieval towns so delightful. Contrast the rather bleak rock of, of Assisi, which towers above the rich treasures of the town beneath, with its basilica of St Francis, numerous churches and Roman temple. And it is a similar story in many other Umbrian hilltop towns, including Narni, Orvieto, Spello and Todi. These rocche were built from the 12th century onwards, as the popes extended their control outwards from Rome. The bishops of Rome, which is the formal title of the popes, had first acquired land around Rome in the 4th century, but the fall of the Western Roman Empire and declining influence of the Byzantine East increased their power. Later, from the 1200s onwards, rivalry between the popes and the Holy Roman Emperors favoured the rise of independent Italian city-states, some very small, with the Guelphs supporting the popes and the Ghibellines the emperors. The campaigns of Popes Cesare Borgia and Julius II eventually subdued most of central Italy by the 1500s, and it was during this period that the Rocche were built to consolidate the papacy's military gains. The last of the Umbrian city-states to fall was the mighty Perugia, which in 1540 was conquered by Pope Paul III, and, like the others, was directly governed by the papacy in Rome. The most striking papal fortress must be the Rocca Paolina in Perugia, built in the 1540s by Pope Paul III, which was the symbol of papal power over the city. It was literally built on top of the houses of the once powerful Baglioni faction, following their revolt against the Pope. The materials used came from the neighbouring area of Santa Giuliana, which was demolished in punishment, while the houses, streets, towers and courtyards of the Baglioni were covered with vaults and incorporated underneath the rocker itself. They remain there today, and although the upper parts of the rocker were quickly demolished on Italian unification, you can still wander through the ancient streets in which the sun once shone, but now are covered and dark. To add to the strangeness, the rocker now incorporates a series of escalators to carry people up to Perugia's historic hilltop centre. Italian unification put an end to the Papal States, although the popes tried desperately to hold on to Rome, which was the last Italian city to fall in 1870, at the Battle of Porta Pia. The popes sulked in the Vatican, even excommunicating the King of Italy and refusing to recognise a new Italian state until they cut a deal with Mussolini in 1929, which brought an end to the centuries of conflict between the popes and the people of Italy about who should rule Italy. The Lateran Treaty is why the Vatican remains an independent, sovereign state today, surrounded by the Republic of Italy, although it is just a small remnant of the once much bigger papal states. The years of oppression and neglect under the popes were not easily forgotten, and not for nothing was Umbria part of the so-called Zona Rossa of central Italy, which voted solidly communist after the Second World War, until in 2019 a coalition led by populist Matteo Salvini was swept to power in Umbria, ending 50 years of left-wing rule. I'm not saying the Papal States were like Nazi Germany, but it's interesting how the Papal Fortresses have become such an established part of the landscape that we now think of them as charming, rather than the means of military oppression. 
Well, I hope you found this whistle-stop tour of Italian history interesting, and perhaps we'll view some of those picturesque hilltop forts in central Italy a little differently in future. If you would like to know more about all things Italian, please feel free to like and subscribe, and there'll be another video along shortly.